Hi, I am Lamar Townsend. I'm an energy channeler, a psychic, a tarot reader, and an astrologer. And in this video, I will be doing an energy channeling reading on Anna Nicole Smith. I believe one of my subscribers actually uh, suggested me to do Anna Nicole Smith, and I love Anna Nicole Smith. I'm such a huge fan. Um, it's interesting because when I was younger, when she was like really popular and her TV show was on, on E! I believe, back in the day, I like... I didn't watch it, you know, and I wasn't like the hugest Anna Nicole Smith fan, but there's something about Anna Nicole Smith over these past several months. I would say about like maybe like four months ago I was watching her Anna Nicole Smith show religious religiously. Um, the episodes on YouTube, her and Howard, they were just a hot mess and it was just so cute, so funny. And, but so sad, you know, the loss of Anna Nicole Smith, her daughter's so beautiful. And I just thought that it would be so appropriate to do this reading um, and see what is going on with Anna Nicole Smith. You know, how was her life? Uh, how did she view her life? What's going on with her now, maybe? And let's just see what the spirits and the energy has to relay, the information that, you know, they have to relay to us. So before I get into the video, I just want to let you know that I am available for personal readings. Definitely check out my website, lamartownsintarot.com to purchase your personal reading from me. You can also call me or text me at 703-791-9162 for a personal reading and I will get back to you as soon as possible, alright? Uh, but if you purchase your reading right away, you know, of course, I'll get your reading done as soon as possible. The typical turnaround time for a reading is usually one to two days, one to three days, depending on how busy I am. Because sometimes I'll, you know, have free time for a day or two, and then I'll get booked, you know, for the next three days. So it really, you know, depends. But right now I have some free time. I finished all my personal readings. Um, I'm, of course, it's early in the morning, so I'm anticipating more coming in probably today, and that's why I did this video, or uh, why I'm doing this video now, this morning, while well, I have free time, but um, I just wanted to get, let you guys know that I'm available for readings. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video, and when you hit the subscribe button, make sure you hit the bell and hit all notifications, and make sure you also follow me on my Instagram and Facebook, Lamar Townsend Tarot, on both Instagram and Facebook. So, let's get right into the energy channeling of Anna Nicole Smith. Alright, so as you all know by now, I like to cleanse the energies with some sage before I get into my energy channeling readings, and any reading in general, you'll see me do, or you'll get from me as a personal reading, I always cleanse the energies before, I always cleanse the cards, alright, um, just so that the channels are a bit clearer, and the information can come down quicker and smoother, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and say a quick prayer. Thank you, Father God, for opening up the channel so that I can get a good reading on Anna Nicole Smith. And thank you for speaking through me, Father God. Thank you for protecting my energy, my thoughts, my mind, my emotions, and my space, and protecting the thoughts, minds, emotions, and spaces of those watching this video. In Jesus' name I pray and thank you. Amen, amen, and amen. So it's interesting, immediately I pick up Danny Lynn, and Danny Lynn is literally a splitting image of Anna Nicole Smith. Now it's interesting because Danny Lynn pretty much looks like Anna Nicole Smith right now at her young age. I don't know how exactly old Danny Lynn is now. I'm assuming she would be maybe like 8 or 10, something around or something around that age. She could be older, I'm not sure. But there's something about Danny Lynn where she, as she gets older actually, she's going to look more and more like Anna Nicole Smith. I literally see like an infusion of Anna Nicole Smith and Danny Lynn's energy. So there's something about actually Anna Nicole Smith that either Definitely walks beside Danny Lynn, but I feel like there's something about Danny Lynn where she holds Anna Nicole Smith literally in her. Not for nothing, I believe Danny Lynn is the only living child of Anna Nicole Smith, you know, in the physical realm as we speak right now, because I believe her son passed away prior to her actually passing away, Anna Nicole Smith. So, there's something about Anna Nicole Smith where... She's like, you know, I believe it's like her and Danny, Danny Lynn are like kind of like one body. So I, there's something about Danny Lynn and Anna Nicole where I believe like we may even see certain things that Danny Lynn does where like it's like, is Anna Nicole speaking through Danny Lynn? That's something Anna Nicole would say. That's, that's something Anna Nicole would do. It is Anna Nicole and it's her energy literally speaking maneuvering, you know, whatever it is doing through Danny Lynn. All right. And I believe but the, the father's name is Howard. Like, I believe Howard notices these things as well. Like, you know, it's something Anna Nicole Smith would do. Like, it's kind of interesting. 
I believe the son is also around Danny Lynn as well. All right, um, and it's interesting because that's something Anna Nicole has always wanted is was children. She's always wanted children, and the loss of her son was the biggest heartbreak of her life ever. It was extremely hard for her to to move past that and to to heal from the loss of her son. And to be honest, I'm looking at the energy and I'm feeling the energy, and I don't think she ever really got over the loss of her son. All right, um. Part of me does feel like, and I guess we're getting to this early, part of me feels like the overdose, because I'm here, overdose. Part of me feels like the overdose that happened with Anna Nicole Smith was because she wanted to be reunited with her son or she missed her son a lot. Which tells me that prior to the son, or after the son passing, I feel like Anna Nicole Smith would literally take drugs due to the depression of her son, losing her son, and things like that. But also to like almost like tap into his energy you know how sometimes you know certain um drugs or substances that people take will literally kind of take them into the spiritual realm and i feel like that's part of what anna nicole smith was trying to do to reconnect with her son even on a subconscious level so it makes sense and i'm hearing heroin so i don't know allegedly if that's what anna nicole smith was into or what the situation was i don't think she was necessarily shooting up i think you know there must be other forms or other ways to take to take that type of substance substance i'm, I'm thinking all right because i'm thinking she took something in like pill form a lot of the times i do believe she would snort something every now and then and then of course she did drink she would smoke you know some weed every now and then of course but i feel like you know it's interesting because, you know, Anna Nicole Smith was kind of like a good time, fun girl. And we saw that a lot in her personality. You know, it shined through, you know, tremendously. But at the same time, I feel like there were moments where Anna Nicole Smith would be behind closed doors by herself and she would have time to think. This was even prior to the sun passing away. She would have time to think, she would have time to reflect, and she honestly felt alone. So I'm actually wondering what, Zo what Anna Nicole Smith's zodiac sign was because I do feel like a loner kind of personality or a loner energy from Anna Nicole Smith. Not to say that she didn't like people, not to say that she um, isolated herself from people. I just feel like... She preferred to, in certain instances, be alone. Like, she definitely liked her alone time. Not too much alone time, because too much alone time could actually be bad for Anna Nicole Smith. Being too much in her mind, too much in her feelings, she needed to be taken out of that, you know, every now and then, which is why she would take drugs, but also, which is why she kept a lot of people around her, you know, so she could get kind of not be so caught up in her own problems, if that makes sense. Um... It's interesting because I'm seeing mushrooms. Like, I don't know if that means shrooms or something something else. But I feel like Anna Nicole Smith was very experimental in terms of the actual substances that she took. All right. Um, but once again, I just keep getting this energy where, like, a lot of the substances she took, it was because she was trying to reach some sort of subconscious level. So she was actually smarter than we thought. She's actually more spiritual than we thought as well when she was alive. It's just that I don't think she went the best way about going about that spirituality, i.e. taking drugs and things of that nature, all right? She also didn't have, while she had a lot of people around her, I don't think she had the people around her that had her best intentions at heart, all right, all the time. Um, and I'm definitely picking up Howard, all right? Um, not the Howard, Danny Lynn's father, the other Howard, the lawyer, all right, um... And it feels like Howard was like the, the, the number one guy. So it was like Howard was her, her right hand man and then everyone else kind of trickled down below Howard. So I feel like Howard was the one who kept everyone in line, probably even in a Nicole Smith in, in certain instances. Um, it's interesting though because I do feel like every now and then Howard would allegedly, all right, partake in some of the fun, you know, in terms of substances and things like that with Anna Nicole Smith. So once again, I feel like not necessarily the best influence on Anna Nicole Smith when she needed to get help. She actually had people around her doing drugs with her, doing um, substances with her, allegedly. This is what I'm seeing, okay? Um... Towards the end of her life, she was very focused on being skinny and being fit, and it makes sense. I remember, because I think, I like, 
I'm a 90s baby, you all. I'm a 2000s baby, so I have really, really good memory about pop culture and things like that. And I remember it, and Nicole Smith had, like, was it Nutrisystem? Or, like, she had some, or was it Jenny Craig? She had some type of, like, um, she had some type of sponsorship with a weight loss kind of, um, a weight loss company, I believe, right? And, like, I'm going back to, I was at the MTV Awards where she was like, look at my body, you know? And I feel like, once again, that had something to do with the sponsorship. But I'm just picking up that she was very focused on being skinny and um, not being overweight, not being plump. She looked good either way, in my opinion. You know, I think she actually looked better, you know, um, with a little bit of meat, more meat on her bones. But that's just my opinion. But I actually think there's something about Anna Nicole Smith when she had more meat on her bones when she actually felt insecure about her weight. I do believe that Anna Nicole Smith struggled with weight issues. And I actually wouldn't be surprised if she struggled with, like, bulimia or something like that at one point. Um, or if that was, like, a reoccurring struggle for her. Um... But I just feel like after the loss of her son, she became a complete mess. Um, and that's where, when everything kind of spiraled out of control. It, was the it wasn't only the loss of her son. I feel like there were certain things mo like in business that were changing around her. And she just started to not recognize her own life. You know, she, did, she started to not recognize the people around her. And it, it, like life just became very bleak and dark, I feel like, around her. The loss of a child is, is really, really, you know, something that no one wants to go through. And I feel like that's actually her speaking through me right now. The loss of a child is no one, something no one ever wants to go through. But then also I'm seeing, like, when I, co when I close my eyes, and this has always means something to me. When I close my eyes, I see all, like, these, like, kind of evil eyes looking at me. Which tells me that she had to go through the loss of her son while in the public eye. Alright? While in the eye of the public... And, of course, with the public, you know, uh, people have their opinions. You know, some I feel like some people actually blamed her for his death or, like, you know, um, chastised her for his death in some way. And it's just kind of like it, it wasn't really her fault, but there came a point where because she was listening to the media, she had time to reflect alone, all right, she started to kind of think, maybe it was my fault that I lost my son. And I think that's where that stemmed from. I think Anna Nicole actually felt like... It was her fault that she lost her son. Okay, so my camera's about to die, so I'm going to get into Anna Nicole Smith's death and see what she has to say about that. So I see her taking pills, waking up taking pills, drinking. It was definitely a hard day for Anna Nicole Smith in terms of her mental health the day she passed away. She was definitely not in her right mind. I think she was definitely depressed over something. And I think she just continued to take pills, continued to drink. Once again, I'm thinking she was alone when she passed away, actually. And there's something about Anna Nicole Smith, and once again, which, when she was alone, you kind of had to keep an eye on her, actually. You know, because she could kind of get into her own trouble. Or, you know, kind of like one of those things where it's like, I can do bad all by myself. Because um, I feel like there were instances where, like, Anna Nicole Smith would be left alone. And she, like, someone would walk in the room and she'd be passed out. You know, like, OD kind of thing. So... Um, it was one of those things where I don't think anyone was actually keeping an eye on her, and I don't think Anna Nicole Smith was keeping an eye on her own intake of the drugs or the substances she was taking. I'm seeing Xanax. I'm seeing, like, more, like, mind-numbing, uh, mind-altering substances that she's actually taking. It just feels like she took too much, and it feels like, you know, I actually feel like she threw up. Like, I feel like it's, like... a. a it's a, a fax list or something like that. It's like where you take, you drink too much, you take too much drugs, and you actually throw up and end up choking on your own vomit or something like that. Really harsh, really too TMI, I know, but I'm picking up this energy where I feel like she actually had something like that happen to her where I think she actually threw up because she ingested too much. She's saying that she was worried. I think she was worried about something, and I think she just wanted to actually sleep. I think she just wanted to sleep the day away. Um, it was one of those days where I think she just, you know, it, she didn't want to deal with the day. She didn't want to deal with the day. You know, depression hit her hard that day. And I'm wondering if actually, like, something about that day, the day she passed away, coincided with maybe the anniversary or of the death of her son in some way, shape, or form. Because I feel like there was something like that coming up where it's like she had some sort of business 
issue going on or business situation going on that was like causing her depression or sadness or it could have been some sort of legal situation actually now that I'm picking up. But I think there was something also about the energy of the day itself or the energy surrounding that day leading up to that day that was also a little bit hectic or sad for her as well. So I do feel like it was like a culmination of different things. I also think she was, you know, dealing with the media and stress from the media as she was trying to, you know, get back. Because I think by this time, Anna Nicole Smith was actually in addiction mode, like complete addiction, you know, like um, to, to, to drugs and alcohol and things like that. So I actually think if she had lived, she probably would have had, we probably would have heard her going to rehab or something like that. Um... But there's something about that day where it was just like she was dealing with a lot of pain and sadness. And I feel like she passed away. Um, I feel her heart beating really fast. So I feel like her heart was beating really fast. Like she knew she was passing, but there was nothing she could do about it kind of thing. And I just see her slipping out of her body. Like her spirits just kind of slipping and floating out of her body. Um, and then I feel like she was... I'm getting four, so I'm wondering if she was found 40 minutes after she actually passed away, four hours after she passed away or something like that, but I'm getting the number four. So, or maybe if there were four people who actually found her, I'm not sure. Um, but she's saying she's sorry. She didn't mean to do what she did. She was just going through the throes of depression. It was difficult being her. Um, but she loved her life. She loves her children. She's with her son right now. She's always around her little baby daughter, Danny Lynn. And, um, you know, she wants her fans to know that she, she hears them. She hears you all. She loves you all. She loves the prayers you all send her and the, and the, the thoughts you all send her, the condolences you all send her. And, we, you know, she really wants us to lift Danny Lynn up and to help Danny Lynn be a good girl. I hear her saying, be a good girl, all right? She really wants us, you know, as the public, as, as the people who knew Anna Nicole Smith, were fans of Anna Nicole Smith, to be a part, to be that village that actually helps to keep Danny Lynn up and raise her up. So that's my reading on Anna Nicole Smith, you all. Thank you all. I would love to have gone on, but the camera's about to die, which probably tells me that Anna Nicole Smith doesn't want to talk too long. She's saying love yourselves. Love yourselves. Love what you do. Love your body. <laughs> and, you know, just try to find ways to cope with stress that don't negatively impact your body, don't negatively impact your mind and things of that nature, because that was my downfall. And Nicole Smith, I love you. I love you so much. And, you know, I send you love and light. And I, and I wish you well. And I send you back to the light with your son. I'm also seeing a dog around her, too, actually. I feel like it was, like, a, a family dog that she's, like, had since she was a kid. It's kind of one of those dogs where it's, like, you, you lose them when you're young. And you just always remember them. And when she, once you pass over, they're one of the first people to reach you kind of thing. So... I do think when she passed over, she was greeted by family, ancestors, and I'm actually seeing her being greeted by animals. So I'm wondering if Anna Nicole Smith was actually an animal person when she was alive. Definitely probably was an animal person in a past life because I feel like there's something about her when she passed over that maybe coincided or connected the tapestry of like a past life in some way shape or form i'm not sure what i mean by that but i'm just picking up that energy as well so thank you for listening and watching make sure you subscribe to my youtube channel like this video comment and share with your friends and family this is my energy channeling reading on anna nicole smith once again if you want a personal reading from me i'm available check out my website lamartownsintero.com i do have specials right now the new year special which is one candle you get a 30-minute recorded psychic tarot reading and a 30-minute recorded bird chart reading for $100. I also have the $55 special for a 20-minute psychic tarot reading and a 20-minute bird chart reading. I also have subscription service readings where you pay a monthly fee. The most popular option is $20 a month for a 10-minute reading sent to your email the first of the month each month. The great thing about being a part of my subscription services readings is that sometimes I will send you coupon codes so that you can get a certain percentage off or a certain amount off of regularly priced readings. So... That's an advantage of that. But thank you for listening and watching. And I hope I gave you some insight and clarity into Anna Nicole Smith. I'm sorry this video couldn't be longer. But maybe I'll do a part two. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. Love and light.